Leggett here in LA and live at the Halo, uh, Halo 4 E3 party um, and we have got the great opportunity to meet Mr. Halo himself, Frank O'Connor. So um, let's go meet the man. Halo has been around for longer than a decade now. Uh, it's, it's got a formula that's already extremely popular with fans. Uh, do, do you worry that some of the changes, some of the bold changes that you've made to both single player and multiplayer might put some people off? Yes. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's a difficult thing, you know, uh, trying to respect the core of what makes Halo fun and what makes Halo resonate with people, but doing the right thing and evolving it and taking it forward, and not just technologically, but like you said, gameplay, narrative, design choices, it is really stressful and, and you know, at, at the end of the day what you eventually have to do is say, these are the decisions that we think are right and these are the things that we've tried and we've tested and we've honed and we've tuned and they are fun and people are going to be scared of change and they're going to be scared of evolution, they always are. And this happens not just with, with 343's game, but with every iteration of the Halo franchise and the good stuff people learn to love and, uh, and the bad stuff, you know, we figure it out as we go along but we feel really confident about this and the way that all of these things matrix together and interact. 343 Studios has, um, you know, so you've done um, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, um, but this is the first time that you've actually taken it um, and you've actually crafted, like, the, going forward, what's going to happen with Halo. Um, is that also a big, um, you know, concern for you that, um, I, I know you've come from Bungie yourself and um, your team has a lot of ex Bungie staffers, but, um, you know, is, is that something that concerns you as well? I mean, to, to your point, most of our staff are new uh, to, the, to the series and, uh, and we have a few ex Bungie people there, but all of the people we have are, are really top notch. And one of the interesting things about the way that we hired was that everybody who showed up for an interview at 343 Industries over the years was a Halo fan. That's why they came to work there. They wanted to work on Halo. And so that's been a luxury. And, and the, the luxury that, that piles on top of that is the fact that they're able to bring different culture, different technology, different experiences, and different techniques to our universe and help us with that process of evolution and help bring new things into it. And the game looks great because we brought in some new technology and the game plays great because we're able to bring in some new ideas, but all from people who loved Halo and therefore completely understood what made Halo cool and, and were able to respect the core and the heart of that experience. So Frank, we have a new race of enemy that was introduced in the trailer that we saw at the Xbox 360 press the other day, uh, the Prometheans. Uh, what, what can you tell me about these guys? They're a very mysterious race. Sure, the, the Prometheans are a non-organic, uh, 100,000 year old foreigner warriors, uh, woken from their slumber by the arrival of Chief and Cortana. There's a little bit more to it that I can't go into because it's a spoiler, but uh, there are three different kinds that we've shown. They're uh, the crawlers. Uh, these are kind of uh, uh, almost canine uh, harriers of a sort. They they rush around, they're incredibly mobile and nimble. They can crawl on ceilings, they can leap 60 feet in the air, but they're quite flimsy. They're incredibly fun to shoot. They're like, you know, popping bubble wrap. Um, but in numbers, they're really, really challenging. Then we have the Watchers. Watchers aren't themselves very dangerous, but what they do is they, they, they help power the other combatants on the field. So they'll shield the, the crawlers, they'll resurrect dead warriors uh, and of course they spawn and teleport the uh, Promethean Knights which are the main uh, antagonists. Uh, more powerful than elites, bigger than elites and a lot more complicated in their behavior. So, um, you know, with Halo, um, Bungie famously coined, you know, the uh, guns, grenade, melee uh, gameplay. Um, does the introdu uh, introduction of, like, new enemy types such as these, does that, like, um, throw that into disarray, potentially? You know, the, the main core of the, the Halo gameplay, I mean, people define it differently. You know, I've heard people say the guns, grenades, and melee, but, you know, there are people who exclusively try to get through levels in vehicles, for example. It's a sandbox game, and I think that if you, if you try to reduce it, then sometimes you do that artificially and ignore a lot of other aspects of the game that make it fun. So it's still Halo at its core. I mean, everyone I've talked to tonight was able to just pick it up and feel right at home like an old pair of shoes, but still be surprised every now and then by some of the additions. And I think that's the right balance. And speaking of balance, that, you know, the, the amount of stuff that we've added to the sandbox and the fact that we've given people the ability to customize their loadouts means that balance is another huge challenge. And that's, you know, we're getting pretty close, but that's something we have to keep tuning and tuning and tuning until it's just perfect.
the Spartan Ops mode, that's, um, that's a great way to keep players engaged long term. Um, what can you tell me uh, um, about Spartan Ops? So Spartan Ops is, uh, is one of the things we're most excited about. It's, uh, to put it in a nutshell, it's an uh, online episodic cooperative adventure. Uh, think about it like a TV show that you play. It comes free with the game if you buy Halo. The first season of Spartan Ops is absolutely included with that purchase. You just need Xbox Live Gold. Um, and uh, it's released weekly, uh, an episode of Fiction, which is accompanied by five gameplay missions. Uh, so you're really moving the story and the narrative forward. And they're meaningful stories. Every week, something important is going to happen. Some of the biggest ticket story items uh, for the Halo universe for the next next months and years are actually going to happen in Spartan Ops. Uh, so all this stuff matters and there's months of episodes rather than weeks um, so it's a lot of content we've compared it to basically a whole nother campaign uh, in terms of scope and scale but the cooperative experience and the episodic nature we hope we're going to lead to these kind of water cooler moments like you know people go to work and they talk about the episode of Game of Thrones last night and how how shocking that wedding was um, the uh, we hope that we were able to replicate that with with both the fiction and of course the gameplay so they can talk about the crazy thing that happened in the fiction last night but also talk about the experience they had getting to it and and finally you've you've linked single player and multiplayer for the first time in the franchise's history what was the rationale behind that you know, we, we, we made a decision several years ago that we wanted to make uh, everything count fictionally. And so wrapping war games in a fictional wrapper is a fairly simple conceit. Effectively, the, the competitive multiplayer is a, a simulation that the Spartans go through to train for their real missions, and then the real missions are Spartan Ops. But the way that that's going to pay off is in the long term when you're playing uh, Spartan Ops. And the Spartan that you built and the career that you go through and the events that happen to you as a Spartan are actually going to going to have meaning for you and, and create real moments of resonance.